In this module, you will learn about value, wealth, and well-being. What is the role of nature in economies? What does nature provide to people? We will also discuss terrestrial national capital in terms of environmental goods and services that come from the land. We will discuss the hidden benefits or costs of land use. And we will discuss typical economic assessments related to land use. This includes things like natural capital accounting and assessment and cost benefit analysis. In addition, we will talk about the perspective of different state stakeholders of natural capital and options for integrating ecosystem services into policies and planning. We often Think about nature without considering the economic aspects of it. And we know that if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. Hence the need to try to uh, quantify and value nature. Land degradation has devastating ecological and social consequences. However, stakeholder behavior so far has hardly changed. We are still seeing continued land degradation. In the short term, job opportunities and income are usually valued more than ecological sustainability and livelihood opportunities in the future. An underlying reason for this is the perception of wealth and respective measurement frameworks like the gross domestic product, which tends to completely ignore things like the natural capital. Part of the problem is that countries still use the measurement of gross domestic product to measure well-being. And as you can see from this slide, that tends to focus on manufactured capital and financial capital, but ignores natural capital, social capital and human capital. Consideration of natural capital is now gaining momentum. That means that we look at the goods and services provided by land. Because ultimately, all things that we as individuals and society value are relying on a functional natural environment. In order to translate ecological and biological contributions into the realm of economic decision making, we need to look at nature through an economic lens. Thus, natural capital is an economic metaphor for the limited stocks of physical and biological resources found on Earth, as described in the figure in this slide. We distinguish between environmental goods and environmental services, where environmental goods are elements of nature which produce value to people. Natural capital, which exists in a relatively fixed quantity, such as land, minerals, ores and trees. Environmental services, on the other hand, is the contribution of nature to benefits used in economic or other human activity. There is a flow of resources in which quantity is renewed with time, for example, groundwater recharge, flood control, water purification, timber harvest and aesthetic or cultural benefits. This figure is useful for this module and indeed other modules because it shows the goods and services that we uh, obtain from land. When we lose natural capital, we impose a limitation on the economic activities. Capital here is defined as a stock that yields a flow of valuable goods and services into the future. Particularly in nature-based industries, the increase in scarcity of natural resources has become a major limitation to economic activity. When land-based natural capital degrades, the functions and related services are also reduced, and that's associated with different costs. Monetary expressions represent a helpful vehicle to make cost and benefits of different land uses comparable. Values expressed in monetary terms reflect society's preferences for the goods and services provided. It is important to note, however, that physical and economical benefits from land do not always overlap. 
Sometimes losses in natural capital actually mean increases in human or physical capital. For example, water treatment infrastructures necessary due to water pollution. We inevitably have to deal with trade-offs, which means the reduction of an ecosystem services as a consequence of an increase in the use of another ecosystem services. For example, energy production versus tourism. Monetary expressions help us to understand these trade-offs and to understand costs and benefits associated to them. We need to discuss price versus value in terms of understanding a good's worth. And it was Oscar Wilde who said that nowadays people know the price of everything and the value of nothing. In economics, a price is determined by the market as a result of interaction between demand and supply. Prices reflect the true economic value allocated by society to, to a particular good or service, but only under specific market conditions. And we have to ask questions about subsidies, tariffs, monopolies and high competition because not all costs are included in the price of a product or a good. The economic value of a good or service reflects the preferences that society as a whole has for this good or service. Markets often do not take externalities into account. Externalities are those costs a third person suffers from as a result of an economic transition. Examples are groundwater pollution due to the deposition of nitrogen from agricultural production or gully erosion caused because of deforestation upstream. Market prices might thus not reflect true economic costs or true economic benefits and thus the perspective of the society as a whole. This is why externalities need to be internalized, that is, corrected for, for example, by using taxes or subsidies to correct for externalities. Several initiatives, such as the ELD initiative, already attempt to correct calculations regarding the true cost of land degradation and the true value of sustainable practices based on the above logic. Some of the assessment tools for political decision making related to land use include land use planning, environmental impact assessments, damage assessments, sustainability assessments, natural resources or capital accounting, cost benefit analysis, cost effective analysis, if physical rather than economic benefits are considered, and multi criteria analysis. Natural capital accounting and cost benefit analysis directly derived from accounting and ecosystem services and values can be included here. This table shows the difference between natural capital accounting on the left hand side and natural capital assessment on the right hand side of the table. Now we move to cost benefit analysis and cost benefit analysis always compares action scenarios to business as usual scenarios to assess whether an investment leads to net benefits. Often we consider three options, the change nothing, business as usual, the improved productivity, where we introduce an intervention, or we look at alternative land use options. Generally, we choose the option with the greatest net economic benefit for action and adapt the political and economic context to facilitate changes. The cost benefit analysis is described in further detail in a separate module from this one. Along with our attempt to be inclusive of stakeholders, it has to remember that stakeholders relate very much to natural capital. A real change, therefore, will require collaboration between different stakeholders which vary in terms of their perspective on the topic. For example, the private sector are interested especially in production and processing industries for investment into sustainable land management in order to save their natural capital in the long run. In terms of the public sector perspectives, 
environmental degradation might directly influence job creation or food availability, energy production, water security, migration, climate change, etc., which play a vital role for economic development and sustainable growth. Economic arguments regarding this interconnectivity can help to promote investments in SLM from the public sector. Options for integrating ecosystem services into policies and planning include such things as regulatory mechanisms and market-based approaches, which include price-based instruments, subsidies and taxes, etc., and quantity-based instruments such as tradable emission permits or biodiversity offset schemes. Existing markets can be improved by lowering transaction costs and enha enhancing information exchange, for example, eco-labeling. New markets can be created through payments for environmental service schemes, for, ex for example. Some examples of the options for integrating ecosystem services into policies and planning are shown in the figure attached to this presentation. The following two slides provide information and links to enable you to understand and read into this topic in more detail. If you have further questions or you require further information, please visit the two links shown on this slide.